Dwayne likes to listen to old TV shows. And one that he likes to watch is Green Acres. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one. Oliver, who is a lawyer, buys a rundown farm, sight on scene, and he and his city wife, Lisa, they move from the lights of New York City to the hillbilly farm life. And in one episode, Oliver decides what crops he wants to plant. And he gets advice from the guys at Coffee Row, and also from the Department of Agriculture, the Farm Market Report. In one day, he buys and returns corn, wheat, and soy seed, depending on the aches and pains of the guy's wives. That's how they make their decision. Certain acre, acre pain points to a certain seed. And actually, after he plants the corn, he goes back and picks up all the seeds out of the furrow and puts them back in a sack and returns them for a different seed based on a new case of lumbago and a downswing in the market. Very different from today. Today, you're hard at work harvesting with your big machinery. But you also have decisions that you need to make. And how do you decide? How do you make decisions? How do you find answers? How do you make wise decisions, especially when it directly affects you and the life of your family and your livelihood? Today is also the first day back to school, reading, writing, and arithmetic. It can be an exciting time. New and old friends, a new routine, different activities. Some kids love school. They thrive in that kind of an atmosphere. They love learning, they love the sports, the arts, being with their friends. Others don't. They find it challenging. They struggle to learn. It can be scary for them to be away from the familiarity of home. And it may even be hard for them to make new friends. Will I do well? And it can be stressful for parents. Parents, we want our kids to do well. We want them to have friends. At school, we have less control of what they learn and what they hear and who they play with, what they do. And this year, we're dealing with COVID and the uncertainty of how things are going to work out. It's not like it used to be. And we make different decisions. We may send our kids to public school, to university or college. We may send them to a Christian school or a private school. We may homeschool. How do you find answers? How do you know what's best for your kids, for your family? How do you make wise decisions, especially when they have such a direct impact on the life of your kids and you as a family? Two months ago, my devotional was about wisdom. It really struck me. Immediately when I read it, I thought, that is what I need to speak on Labor Day weekend. Proverbs 3.13 says, Blessed or happy are those who find wisdom. She's more precious than jewels. Long life is in her hands. She's a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed or again happy could be a substitute for that word. Many people today are looking for happiness in their work, in their entertainment, maybe through a friend, friends, spouse, children, you may find happiness in money, or in social media, or in drugs, and alcohol, sex. Blessed or happy are those who find wisdom. We think we know what will make us happy, and we keep looking for happiness. And yet, Solomon says in Proverbs that wisdom is of the most value. It says there it's a matter of life and death. Proverbs is full of references to wisdom, as well as the rest of the Bible. Moses and Joseph and Stephen and Solomon are called wise men. Esther and Rahab and Ruth make wise decisions. And Proverbs 4 5, verse 5 says, get wisdom. So my question then is, what is wisdom? And how do we gain or get or find wisdom that leads to life? And I'm going to invite Jed and Nate to come up and read Job 28, verses 12 to 28 with me. Do 
people know where to find wisdom, where can they find understanding? No one knows where to find it, for it's not found among the living. It is not found here, says the ocean. Nor is it here, says the sea. It cannot be bought with gold, or, and it cannot be purchased with silver. It's worth more than the purest gold. But do people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? understanding? It's hidden from the eyes of all humanity. Even the sharp-eyed birds in the sky cannot discover it. Destruction and death say, We've heard only rumors of where wisdom can be found. God alone understands the way to wisdom. He knows where it can be found, for he looks throughout the whole earth and sees everything under the heavens. He decided how hard the winds blow and how much rain should fall. He made the laws for the rain and laid out a path for the lightning. Then he saw wisdom and evaluated it. He set it in its place and examined it thoroughly. And this is what he says to all humanity. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. Thank you, guys. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. I want to tell you a story. The story took place a long time ago in a very different culture and time from today. Daniel was probably a teenager when the story took place. He was very educated, grew up in a privileged family. He was committed to the God of Israel. And suddenly all of that was ripped away. Daniel and his three friends are taken pr as prisoners of war from their families, from their home, from their country, from their center of Jewish worship at the temple. Everything that's familiar is gone. And along with other young men, they're taken to Babylon, which is 600 miles away, to a different culture, different language, different religion, different gods. And they're under the rule of a ruthless king in a foreign country. And they're on their own. No parents to protect or guide them or to rely on. That, to me, is a scary situation. <laughs> especially as a parent. In Babylon, the king's chief official separates the smartest, most handsome boys, and he moves them into the king's palace to live and to go to school for three years. They'll be trained by the best teachers in Babylon in the king's royal academy. They will learn a new language and a new religion. They will be integrated into Babylonian culture. That will change their lifestyle. It'll change their way of thinking and their loyalties. Even their names are changed to, to uh, Babylonian gods' names. The desire is to make them Babylonian. And again, that's scary. And Daniel and his three friends are chosen for this great honor. Yet even in this frightening situation, Daniel takes matters into his own hands, and he determines to do what is right. You may wonder how. What could he do? He's a prisoner. Will he, will he refuse a new name? Will he refuse to learn a new religion or a new language? Or will he refuse to be educated in the Babylonian way? We're told that Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asks the chief official, Ashpenaz for a test. They will eat nothing but vegetables and water for 10 days. And then you compare us to the rest of the boys and see what happens. I always love this verse. It says, God causes Ashpenaz to show favor to Daniel. God is with Daniel even in this foreign country. And Ashpenaz likes Daniel. It says, God caused that to happen. And even although that official could get into serious trouble, depending on the results of this test that they want to do, he agrees, he agrees to it. And at the end of 10 days, Daniel and his three friends look healthier, and they're better nourished than those who ate the, ro the king's royal food. So God not only blesses them for his, their faithfulness, 
but he gives them greater ability to learn and master the skills. And after three years, Daniel and his friends are ten times wiser, not only than the other young men in their class, but of all the wise men in Babylon. And Daniel and his friends are given positions of special responsibility in the king's court. And God gives Daniel a position of influence in the kingdom of Babylon that extends over 70 years. What is wisdom? There's a difference between wisdom and godly wisdom. We can be highly educated and not be wise. And believe, please know that I'm not speaking against what we're going, uh, the wisdom that we wouldn't necessarily call godly wisdom. There is wisdom in our world. But in 1 Corinthians, Paul contrasts the foolishness of the wisdom of the world with the wisdom of God. Job declares, the fear of the Lord is true wisdom. And Solomon writes, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Wisdom that leads to life and to joy and to blessing begins with knowing and fearing the Lord. It's revering God. It's loving and trusting him, knowing that we can trust him, knowing him, that, knowing him in a way that we love him and that we grow in his love. It's respecting his ways because we found them to be the way to real life. Daniel feared the Lord. He was committed to following God's ways even when he was a prisoner and he had no choice in that hopeless situation. In a place where he had no choice, he makes a choice. He makes a decision to honor what marked him specifically as being one of God's people. He would follow God's dietary laws. They were a mark of the Jews' identity and allegiance to God. And that's what he chooses to focus on. And Daniel makes a wise, godly decision, and he determines to keep himself for the Lord only, and to be faithful to God, and God honors that decision. I asked a few of you this week how you make decisions on the farm, where there's so much that is out of your control. You said things like, you make plans, you seek input from others. You, you make plans based on past experience. What has worked before? What are the prices doing? You try to do your best. You try to work efficiently. You buy new, sh new machinery before the old machinery is too old and not worth anything. You pray. You pray with your wife and with others. Some of you are more risk takers than others. You ask questions of yourself. How does what I do affect others? How do I handle conflict? How do I balance my time? What kind of a person do I want to be? How do I represent Jesus in my day-to-day -day work? One person said, I wish God gave clearer guidance. And I thought, don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? No Bible verse says, thou shalt plant canola this year. It doesn't say, put your kids in hockey. It doesn't say, go to school. But it does guide us in the decisions that we make. And it shows us how to gain wisdom. So I suggest, and I, I would encourage, that studying and meditating on scripture is a w good way to gain wisdom. It helps us to know God. How we see God is so important. Helps us to know God and God's character, his great love for us, his mercy and his kindness and his goodness. God desires for us to know him, to be with us. He desires to show us his ways more and more. Do we desire that in return? I still pray Psalm 63 almost every day. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Solomon says that wisdom from God is more precious than rubies, that nothing you desire can compare with her. Desire wisdom. Pray for wisdom. James says, If any of you lack wisdom, ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to us. 
Again, we won't find those answers spelled out in Scripture, but the Holy Spirit will guide us. He will give us wisdom as we seek direction. We can pray together, seek advice from others, act on past experience, and live by faith. Ask yourself, what kind of a person do I want to be? How do I represent Jesus in all I do? Proverbs 11:12 says a wise person is characterized by humility. I thought, wow. And James tells us that godly wisdom is pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. These are characteristics that we can grow in that will make us wise. When Proverbs talks about wisdom, she's often referenced to as, or portrayed as a woman. Scholars believe that wisdom is a personification of Jesus. And in the book of Proverbs, Lady Wisdom calls out. She calls out, leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who lay hold of her will be blessed. There's also another woman that's talked about in Proverbs. A woman named Folly. She's undisciplined. And she's without knowledge. And she also calls out. And she says, let all who are simple, those who lack judgment, come in here. Stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there. That her guests are in the depths of the grave. Choices to, to make. My heart has been breaking over the last few days. Someone attempted to take his life on Friday. He's in the hospital. As I looked at this, I thought he chose the path of folly. He got heavily involved in drugs and alcohol and with people in that lifestyle. Over time, the drugs changed him. He lost his wife and his kids, his home, and his family. He's bound by Satan, and he wants to die. It doesn't happen all at once. It starts with the choices we make, the decisions we make. It starts slowly as we lean closer to that forbidden fruit, and as we check out the wrong path. And I'm praying along with his family that God's going to give him another chance draw, to draw him back to what he knew years ago when he was in re right relationship with the Lord. My prayer for all of us is that we will fear the Lord, that we will seek after the Lord with all of our hearts. Bring your questions, your frustrations, your fears to him because it's in him that you will find life and life to the fullest. The story of Daniel gives me hope in our troubled times. It shows me that God is with us. We can learn. We can grow in our jobs and in our school. But God gives us wisdom, his wisdom, as we seek after him and as we walk in his ways, as we lean into the very heart of God as we fear the Lord. Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Build your house on the rock. The rock that cannot be moved. May our roots grow deep, down deeper and deeper into him. And may our lives be built on him. And may we find wisdom the fear of the Lord. Let's pray together. Oh God, I thank you that your word isn't just a spoken word and left out there hanging, but that your Holy Spirit draws out to us, reaches out to us, and draws you, draws us to to you, that you seek us out, 
and that you teach us. And when you, we need answers, Lord, you are there with us as we make decisions. Lord, think especially of the young people, the kids, young adults. There's so many temptations out there. Paths that can be chosen. And Lord, I know that each of these young people have, have made a commitment or have made the desire, has shown that they want to live for you. As small children, but Lord, there's so much that can draw us away from you. Draw us in, I pray, O oh God. Be with our children, with our young adults, our teens, that they may continue to make choice to follow you, that they will make a commitment to follow you, that they will walk in your ways. Give us godly wisdom, I pray, O oh God. Give us godly wisdom that we may find life and blessing even in the struggles of life. Lord, that we can know that we are standing on that rock and it can get, we can feel shaky at times, but that when we are on that solid rock, that rock does not move. Thank you, O oh God, for salvation. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for your word shows us who Jesus is. Lord, I just pray that we may come to know you more and more. And Lord, I pray that you will fill us with the knowledge of your will and spiritual wisdom and understanding. May the way we live always honor and please the Lord. And may our lives produce every kind of good fruit. Oh God, may we learn to know you more and more. May we be strengthened with your glorious power so we will have all the endurance and patience we need. May we be filled with joy, always thanking the Father, because you have enabled us to share in the inheritance that belongs to your people who live in the light. Thank you, O oh God, because you have rescued us from the kingdom of darkness, and you've transferred us into the kingdom of your dear Son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you. Continue to train us in wisdom, Lord. Continue to train us in wisdom. Continue to show us your ways. Thank you for this week ahead of us. I pray, O oh God, as we are out and about, that we may have opportunities to share the goodness of Jesus Christ with those around us in our words and in our actions. Pray that whether we are alone in a tractor or whether we are uh, with family and home, wherever we may be, O oh God, that we may sense your presence with us. And in the midst of the daily, um, the daily activities of life, that you will show us the way. And Lord, as you have blessed us, I pray that we may be a blessing to many in Jesus' name. Amen.